Um, Mr. Secretary, in the late summer of last year, it became apparent that the Russians were doing more than uh, gathering foreign intelligence, that they were in fact dumping it in a way designed to potentially influence outcomes, not by affecting the vote machines necessarily, but by affecting American public opinion with the dumping of these emails. So that's happening in late summer, uh, mid to late summer. Why did it take the administration so long to make a public statement that a foreign adversary was trying to influence the American election? The statement didn't come until October. Uh, why did we wait from July till October to make that statement? Well, Congressman, I'm going to disagree with your premise that there was some type of delay. Um, this was a big decision, and there were a lot of considerations that went into it. Uh, this was an unprecedented step. Um, first, as you know well, uh, we have to carefully consider whether declassifying the information compromises sources and methods. Second, there was an ongoing election, and many would criticize us for perhaps taking sides in the election. So that had to be carefully considered. One of the candidates, as you recall, was predicting that the election was going to be rigged in some way. And so we were concerned that by making the statement, we might in and of itself be um, uh, challenging the integrity of the, of the election process uh, itself. Um, this was, this was a, a very difficult decision, but in my personal view, it's something we had to do. It got careful consideration, a lot of My view is that we needed to do it, and we needed to do it well before the election to inform the American voters of what we knew and what we saw, and that it would be unforgivable if we did not pre-election. And I'm glad we did it. You know, every, Congressman, every big national security, <laughs> homeland security decision I've made in my time Somebody always criticizes you for what doing it, and then somebody else criticizes you for not doing it sooner. So uh, Jim Clapper and I made the statement on October 7th, uh, and I'm glad we did, frankly. Um, I think the larger issue is it did not get the public attention that it should have, frankly, because uh, the same day, the press was focused on the release of the Access Hollywood video. Uh, that's what made our news below the fold news that day. Well, I want to ask you uh, about that uh, as well, but... Um, a couple things. There were certain allegations by one of the campaigns, the Trump campaign, that the process was rigged. Yes. But the allegation wasn't that it was being rigged by a foreign power. Um, why wasn't it more important to tell the American people the length and breadth of what the Russians were doing to interfere in an election uh, than any risk that it might be seen as uh, putting your hand on the scale? Uh, didn't, well, it, didn't the public have a compelling need to know, uh, notwithstanding the claims made by a campaign about a different kind of rigging, um, and, and the need to rebut the idea that this was being presented to the public deliberately to influence the outcome? Uh, yes, yes, and yes, which is why we did uh, tell the American public everything we were in a position to tell them on that date. You'll note from my statement that we attributed the hacking directly to the Russian government. We were not then in a position to attribute the scanning and probing to the Russian government. We did say it was coming from a Russian-based platform at that point, but at that point, we told the public everything we could tell them, uh, and I'm glad we did. So the priority of informing the American public did override all of those other considerations, which is why we did what we did. Mr. Secretary, you mentioned, though, that the statement you issued didn't get much attention because of the timing of Access Hollywood. When it didn't get that much attention, why didn't the administration go further? Why didn't the president, for example, speak about this? It was left to yourself and Director Clapper to issue a written statement without any further elaboration. Uh, there were no steps taken, for example, to impose sanctions uh, on Russia. Um, why weren't those additional steps taken when the first notice really uh, was essentially overlooked by the public? Well, I, you, you shouldn't view the October 7th statement in isolation, sir. First, um, I had been engaging state election officials uh, since August, and I had issued a public statement on August 15th. I issued a public statement on September 16th uh, informing the public and state officials what we knew at the time. I issued another public statement on October 1st. There's the October 7th statement. Then I issued another statement on October 10th. So 
This was an ongoing effort to inform the public about everything we were in a position then to tell the public. It wasn't just the October 7th statement. Now, that October 7th statement um, was notable in another way in that it didn't include James Comey's signature uh, as the agency that would be foremost, uh, uh, have the foremost responsibility for the forensics of attribution. Why wasn't uh, Director Comey's signature on that statement? Well, um, the thinking was that a statement should come from the intelligence community, and Jim Clapper then sat atop the intelligence community as the DNI. Separately, <clears throat> we wanted to put out a statement from HS about what state election officials can do about this and, again, encourage them to come to us. At some point in the discussion, Jim and I decided to just make it a joint statement, and that's what happened. Uh, there have been public reports uh, in the last week or two that the Russian probing of our elections infrastructure was far more widespread than has been publicly acknowledged and may have affected dozens of states. Um, what can you tell us about uh, what was known at the time uh, and what you know now in terms of the length and the breadth of Russian uh, probing of our elections infrastructure? How widespread was it? And did it go beyond uh, penetration of voter databases uh, or manipulation of data in any way? There was very definitely in the fall a growing list of states where we saw scanning and probing around voter registration databases, which concerned us greatly. Uh, as I think I stated in one of my public statements, uh, probably the October 1st statement, in at least one or two instances, the effort was successful at an intrusion. So there was a growing list, and we saw the scope of this activity expanding as time progressed. And then eventually, in January, we were in a position to say that this, this activity itself was also uh, the Russian government. Now, I, too, have seen the more recent reports I have not had access to classified information for five months, so I'm not in a position to tell you whether it's right or wrong, but very definitely, as fall progressed, we saw a progression of scanning and probing activities around voter registration uh, databases, which concerned me, which is why I kept encouraging state officials to come and seek our help. Did that involve a majority of the states? Yes, uh, and I was very pleased about that. Eventually, well, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean I don't mean the that they took you up on the help, but were the, did the Russians probe a majority of the state voter databases? I don't know the final count because um, I haven't had access to the intel for the last five months. I know what I see open source, and I'm not a, in a position to agree or disagree. I've seen open source. I think 39 states, and I'm I'm not in a position.